what is divergence insufficiency? So for this video, we're gonna pretend that this is a tree a long ways away. First thing we need to do is define divergence. Divergence is when you pull the eyes outward and diverge them in their alignment. We do this every time we look at something far away. We converge it for something close and diverge for something far away. In the real world, this is gonna be really important for kids um, copying off the board. This is also gonna be really important for driving and seeing a street sign. In sports, um, MLB and Division One athletes that I have seen uh, have had a hard time fully diverging their eyes. And even though they have 2015 and 2015 vision, they'll say they can't see the ball. And that's because their eyes are actually not aimed equally at the ball. So in divergence insufficiency, what's nice is the name describes what is what the error is, what the problem is. If someone were to, someone were to look back at a tree or maybe the board uh, in a classroom or street sign or the pitcher's hand and try and catch where the fingers and the seams are lined up, they need to fully diverge their eyes back to that target. Obviously, in divergence insufficiency, they miscalculate spatial data that is delivered to the brain from the eyes, and they guide their eyes, they send their eyes to a point in space that is closer to them than that distant object. So they send an autonomic signal to diverge insufficiently. Divergence insufficiency is, is something that most patients will notice and they will correct for it and they will push their eyes out so they won't have a moment of an eye turn or a lazy eye or a strabismus. But that's obviously like running a marathon with a brick in your backpack. You now have to exert extra effort and energy every time your eyes are open for every moment to make sense of that world out in the distance. Divergence and sufficiency when it comes to misalignment, our eyes technically at distance should rest one prism diopter behind a target. We call that one exophoric. There's a standard deviation of two. So you could either go from one to zero or one esophoric, and that's within a standard deviation of normal, or you go out to three exophoric for your resting position. And again, that's where your brain autonomically sends your eyes. So the normal range would be one ESO to three EXO. If your brain lands in that range, then it's calculating space accurately. When it then, but if it lands outside of that range, again, it will have to work harder. Um, divergence insufficiency, again, is when your brain miscalculates on the esophoric end. So you don't diverge your eyes out far enough and your resting position is like two, three, four, five, six and higher esophoria. If you are not, if you are misaligned so far that you cannot compensate for it 100% of the time, then we will have moments where you lose alignment and one eye turns inward. This is now considered a strabismus, or as I like to call it, like an eye turn. Some people will call it a lazy eye. I don't like that term. It's technically not the eyeball being lazy. Um, but so that can happen with these patients. During those moments where the eye misaligns, the patient may or may not get double vision. They may not get double vision because their brain has learned what they should be seeing and they will suppress an eye. Patients can alternate which eye turns, they can alternate which eye suppresses, and they can also alter how much of that field they suppress. So they may not suppress 100% of the data that one eye is collecting. They may just suppress a part of it. So I know this was a long video, but I hope that that explains what divergence uh, insufficiency uh, is in, in kind of short. Um, it's really just a spatial miscalculation and a misguidance of the brain to send the eyes out into space. Symptoms can definitely um, be uh, gross motor movements, so patients stubbing their toes, 
um, knocking things over, bumping into things, maybe going to um, put a glass down at the end of the counter and miscalculating where the counter is and dropping the glass. It will absolutely be wreak havoc on sports. So it's going to um, decrease reaction time, decrease decision making time, or I, I guess I would say increase decision making time. You're going to need more time to make a decision. Um, it's going to make it much harder to see any moving target that's moving, especially ones that are moving fast, like a tennis ball, a uh, baseball, you know, playing lacrosse, even volleyballs, um, basketballs, those types of objects, soccer balls, are, it's going to be harder. It's going to affect accuracy of footwork and fine motor and gross motor skills. So really, really is a tough one. And it also often causes car sickness. Um, so I hope that this video was helpful uh, in, in kind of like scratching the surface on what divergence insufficiency is, kind of in short. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully this was, this was helpful.